as though she needs a rest. Look, Poppy, maybe not scare me next time. Silly girl, you know I can't resist a good scare. Where have you been? I've missed you. It's none of your business. All you need to know is I had a feeling while I was out that something was wrong, and now that I see you... Hey, what exactly do you mean? What? Nothing. You've never looked better. Cut the crap, Poppy. All right. I won't sugarcoat it. You, my dear, are a hot mess. You can't say that to a teenage girl. I know, but frankly, you look disgusting. <laughs> I will thank you kindly to leave now. Now, now, let's not be hasty. Hold on a second. No, first you scare me, and now you call me ugly? I'm exhausted. I don't have the time or energy to put up with your crap. I never said you were ugly. So what? It was implied. Darling, you know you look dreadful. That is why I'm so worried. You can save your worry. I'm fine. Darla, look at me. What's wrong? Nothing. You know you can't have secrets from me. I told you. It's nothing. Tell me! I haven't been able to sleep for the past three nights. And why is that? I don't know. Of course you know. I, it might be because I'm stressing about writing. You guess? You haven't slept for 72 hours, and you guess it's because of a little thing like writer's block? You guess? Yeah, I guess. I mean, no, I know. Do you have a problem with that? No, not at all. I'm guessing since it's just a little thing like writer's block, it'll be gone in a few days. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Right. So if that is all it is, you'll be fine and I'll be on my way. Goodbye, my darling Darla. Wait, where are you going? I'm not quite sure, but somewhere far away from here. Could you just leave? Just what? What is it that you want? I was just wondering if you could just Just stay? Is that what you would ask of me? Yes, can you please just stay? Why in the hell would I do that? You expect me to waste a moment of my precious time when all you can do is lie to my face? I'm not lying! Oh, come now, Darla. Don't play these games with your dear Poppy. We both know you haven't been able to sleep because of that nightmare. How'd you know I was having a nightmare? The greatest fear that keeps anyone awake is the fear of sleep itself. I don't want to do this. I've had enough for tonight. I need to shower. Although I'm proud of you for wanting to cleanse yourself, you must tell me what greets you when you rest your eyes. Why do I have to tell you? Because there's no one else who cares. I want to tell you. I do. It's just... I can't remember. Just tell me what you do remember. All I know is that it haunts me for the first few moments after I wake. But then, after that, it disappears. Like all normal dreams. It's time to rest your worried head. You should lie down. You're gonna get a good night's rest. No, no, I'm not going to sleep. You have to so we can identify what it is that terrorizes you. That way I can help fix it. I can't do it. I don't want to and I won't. You can do it. We both know that. Now, slide under the covers. It's time to rest your worried head. Focus on your breathing in and out. Good. In and out. I don't know how. I'll make you pay for this someday. Yes, yes, I'm sure you will. Now close. Please, please don't leave. Darla, Darla, I will never leave you. Now close your eyes. What you do remember. All I know is that I'm playing at my grandmother's house in the guest bedroom. I'm small again like I was last time my parents took me to see her. I walk over to one of the shelves and it's filled with horse and dolls. I'm on my tippy toes, I reach for one. The tall in the black and gold dress. I reach and reach, but the shelf it keeps getting higher and higher. It's too far out of your reach. It's almost as though the shelf is a living being. Stretching out to keep you from your prize until it's towering over you. Yes, so I try, I try to climb the shelf instead, but the further up I get, the more the shelf begins to, to tip. I start to fall backwards, bringing the shelf down with me. But it's almost as though you are falling in slow motion now, isn't it? You are falling for the longest time. 
and there's nothing to be done except to think about how it is inevitable that the shelf must crush you. Exactly. I start looking at the dolls as they fall. And their eyes, all I can see are their eyes. They're all looking at me, into me, into my eyes. My eyes start to burn, so I squeeze them shut and throw my arms in front of my face. That's when I hit the ground. But it isn't the same ground as your grandmother's guest room. No, it's harder. It's cold and it's wet on my back. I drop my arms, and when I sit up, I see the room so big, I can't even see the walls. High above, there's a chandelier with four burning candles, emitting just enough light that I can see- The dolls, four of them, life-size, weren't they? Sitting in a circle around you with similar eyes, but this time- This time they're empty, hungry, craving life to fill their empty glass shells, and around their only food source. You are left with only one choice. I stood up. So did the dolls. I made my way towards the one with the black dress. With every step I took, the doll's heads turned a little more. They stood and watched as I wrapped my hands around the doll's neck. But then she smiled, her porcelain skin cracking as her grin grew greater, all the while she was sucking. The life out of me. That's when I knew I'd make an example of the doll in the black dress. I began to twist her neck. I began to twist her neck. I wrung it out. I twisted her neck so hard, her head completely spun around. Her face is right in front of mine. And her eyes. Those terrible eyes. I could feel them, I could feel them training my strength. I, I looked around and saw. All the eyes staring back at you. At me, my eyes, they were draining my strength. I knew I had to drop the doll's head. I couldn't stand. Th they were draining my strength. No one makes a meal of darling Darla. With the last bit of my strength I stood, the doll's head held tight in my hand. I held the head up, foot up in front of my face. We turned to look at the dolls one last time before... I thrust my hand into the doll's eye socket. You ripped that black eyeball right out. It was so soft and warm on my hand, but then I squeezed it. Pop, as easy as bursting a bubble. It's all gooey and messy now, isn't it? Even warmer than before, and the smell... Tell me, Darla, what did it smell like? Fresh chocolate cake. My favorite. I brought my hand closer to my nose and inhaled the scent deeply. I simply couldn't help myself. I began to lick my hand clean. Never have my- Taste buds experienced such blissful pleasure. Oh, but it didn't stop there now, did it? My whole body felt as though it had been reborn. Stronger than ever before. I went to rip the other eyeball out, but I guess I dropped the head in all of my excitement. I bent down. I barely had to bite down before it exploded in my mouth. Why didn't anyone tell me that eyeballs can be so rich? Humans are such selfish pigs. The juices sent another wave of pleasure through my body. I was in a pure state of- Ecstasy. It is unfortunate that something so pure can't exist for long. I felt this, this power being sucked from my veins, my very core, by the dolls who were starting to surround me. Poor, unfortunate fools. They left me with no choice. They had to die. And then it began. I turned around and char charged the first doll I saw, my hands clutching for her neck. I twisted and yanked all the while the beautiful screams of all those little girls bathed my ears. I looked around and saw all the di dolls. And then I, I took out her eyes. All the screams of all those little girls, they just, I heard them, and oh my gosh. Never had the screams of little girls been so intoxicating. With the doll's head held in one hand, the whole room fell silent. It was so quiet you could hear the headless stuffed body hit the hard ground. The doll stared at the fluff that scattered the floor, the body of their fallen friend, and the head that I held high in my hand. I turned to look at the remaining dolls. I looked around and saw the floor it was just scattered with fluff. It was just that was a moment before I could feel the light one come up behind me. You went after the other dolls before she could get to you. The dolls held... I woke from her every to find that I was staring at a floor scattered with stuffing and body parts. Still under the influence of their slaughter, I wiped their delicious essence from my face. I hope you enjoyed the feeling of victory while it lasted. I did. It was a brief calm that felt like a glorious eternity.
It seemed forever. It was only moments before I could feel the light one come up behind me. That is how she makes her presence known. Not by emitting a single sound, but by exuding pure energy. I felt like I was being pulled down towards the ground, after having been suspended there in nothingness. At first, it was a relief. The pull of me strengthened, starting to become uncomfortable. It was silent. Yet I could feel her coming closer by the second. It was then that the pain started in my legs. The excruciating pain. As though she was drilling a heated screw up through your heel and into your leg. It burned, yet it felt just. I knew it needed to happen. I knew I was meant to suffer. Those feelings were not your own. They were sent to you by her. It is not your place to suffer at the hands of others. She made it feel, she made it feel right, like I was getting what I deserved. The light one made me feel as I wanted, needed this excruciating pain to move up my legs and through the rest of my body. I had to turn around as so you could possibly have such control over my body. I turned around slowly. The fire in my legs was spreading, its many tongues licking and lashing at the pit of my stomach to see her. They say she is hideous. Her body resembles that of Lucifer. No, she's the embodiment of light and beauty. Her skin is purer than that of a newborn baby. I just had to touch it. All I wanted to do was touch her face, to bury my head in her shoulder and tell her everything I'd ever done. But you didn't because you know better. I didn't because I couldn't produce a single sound when she looked me in the eyes. I couldn't make a sound. I couldn't move a muscle. The flames had consumed me entirely and were now tickling at my throat. Surely you resisted, or at least did something. Tell me you at least did something. There was nothing to do. Her hand, it was so soft. Don't tell me you just let her win. This was not a game for anyone to win. The light one had come to punish me, to show me all the pain I'd caused. She looked at me with her foggy, glossed over eyes, and it was then that I realized she was here to save me. Those flames, those wicked, agonizing flames, had consumed me entirely as I looked into her terrible eyes for the last time. Please shut up! I haven't uttered a single- You're a thief! You're so loud! I can't think! Oh, really? And I thought your damn dream gone and why I dressed it all you're thinking for you! Stop! You told me that if I told you about my nightmare, you'd fix it! Oh, come now, Dala! There's nothing to be fixed! I go to sleep? Wake up screaming in agony, and you don't think that's a problem? Oh no, it sounds completely miserable. But correct me if I'm wrong, it seems you enjoyed the Light One's torture. Enjoyed it? You think I enjoyed the feeling of my entire body burning in flames? While you didn't technically enjoy it, you certainly weren't complaining. I didn't know how to at the time. She was made to feel like I was getting what I deserved. It hurt so much. Please, Poppy, please just help me. All right. I'll tell you what to do, but you must be the one to do it. Yes, please. Isn't it obvious? You have to kill her. Her? But you don't mean- Yes, the, the one in the white dress. You have to kill her. You want me to kill the light one? The one who can paralyze my body with a single glance? And you want me to do this on my own? Exactly. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you want me to kill her? <laughs> Stop laughing and listen to me. Darla, <laughs> stop it and listen. Darla, you will listen. You need to pull yourself together. I will help you, but you must do exactly as I say. Do you understand? Yes, Poppy. Now you have to kill the, um, as you call her, the- Light one? Yes, you have to kill her. But it's silence. You have to kill her. She came to you in your dream, so it is you who shall spill her blood. Now you need to tell me everything you know about this light one. Absolutely everything. But I already told you everything. Don't open your mouth unless you have something useful to say. The footsteps. God damn it, Darla! These are my feet and I will stomp them as much as I please! No, not you. Her. I felt her before I saw her. <clears throat> she was silent. Well, what does that mean to you? My God, you're useless. Am I going to have to work it out of you, Darla? Darla! What about her eyes? Do you think it at all possible that you could rip out her eyes just as you did the others? I don't know. By the time she looks at me, I'm in too much pain to move. No one is saying you have to wait for her. Didn't you say that you could feel her before you could see or hear her? Yeah, I guess I can. Then you use that to your advantage. Take command of the situation. Surprise her. Run right up behind her and rip out her eyeballs just as you've done so many times before. I don't think- If you say you can't do it one more time, I will leave. 
I will be gone and never return. Do you understand me? Yes, Poppy. If this is going to work, you have to believe that you can do it. Now, tell me how you're going to kill her. I'm going to run up to her and take her eyes out. Oh, come now, Darla. We can do better than that. Again! I'm going to run up to her and rip her eyes out. What are you going to do? I'm going to run up to her and rip her eyes out of her socket. Say it again. I am going to run up to the light one and rip her goddamn eyes out of their sockets. One by one. I'm going to kill the light one. Good. Very good. Poppy? Poppy, are you here? It's okay, Poppy, you can come out now. I need you to... Just breathe, Darla. In and out. Just breathe. Now focus. you really want? If that is what you wish, then that is what you shall have. You're, you're beautiful. Well, thank you, my dear darling. You're a sight for sore eyes, if I do say so myself. But why aren't you, why am I not? Why are you not burning from the inside out? I do believe you have suffered enough for the time being, don't you? Especially with that sickly man hovering about you all the time. Are you talking about Poppy? Yes, Poppy. Poppy, it's such a peculiar name. Don't you agree? So, are they yours? <laughs> oh, these sweet girls? No, I do not own them. They obey me for I've earned their respect. I do not believe it is right to have ownership over a human being. Wait, they're human? <laughs> of course, you silly girl. But they're heads. They're just like dolls. You saw me take mine off an instant ago, didn't you? Do you suppose they can't do the same? I don't know. They just make me feel so... Never mind. You were saying? Their eyes. They just make me feel so... Agitated? Unnormal? Alienated? Uh, yeah, sure. It's quite understandable. These girls aren't accustomed someone like you. Someone like me? Someone who is placing their exquisite beauty, lofty intelligence, invaluable time, and letting it all just go away. I'm not letting myself go away. My dear darling, relax. I never implied that it was your fault. Then whose is it? Pardon my French, but I do believe it is the fault of that shit excuse of a man. What did you call him? Poppy, was it? Don't say that about him. He's always been there for me. Are you sure about that? Why is it that everyone's always asking me all these goddamn questions? First Poppy with a relentless stream of inquiries, and now I'm being interrogated by the light one for Christ's sake! While I do hate to interrupt a healthy rant, I must ask, <laughs> am I meant to be this light one you speak of? Yes, I mean, look at what you're wearing. Oh, I do see where you're coming from, but please, while the name is indeed flattering, call me Matella. All right then, Matella. Why is it that everyone's always asking me all these questions? My dear Darla, it seems as though you're the one asking the questions now. Please don't do this. Poppy plays the same game with me. To which game are you referring? The questions? Reading my mind? Putting words in my mouth? I'm done with it. If you have something to say to me, say it. Just stop playing with me. Fine. If it's the truth you want, it is the truth you shall have. You must get rid of Poppy. What? Why? I thought you weren't fond of questions. Not when I'm the one being asked. Tell me, why must I get rid of Poppy? As hard as this may be to hear, I do believe that he will be the one. The one? What do you mean by that? I mean for all that you rely on him and trust him to be by your side always, he will be the one to eventually end your life. I don't believe it. Why would he do that? Because in a very short time, he won't have you all to himself. You are hilarious. In fact, I find this entire thing utterly hysterical. You find a threat to your very existence humorous? I do, because this is a dream. 
I can wake up whenever I want. You aren't even real! That felt quite real now, didn't it? The time to stop talking and to start listening has arrived. You're not going anywhere unless I give you my permission. Do you understand? For years now, you have let this poppy command your every move. He has taken complete control of your life. Don't. You are so used to this parasite that you've grown dependent on him. In fact, you can't function properly if he's not there. <laughs> and he's begun making all of your decisions for you. Isn't it true that he was the one who decided you were going to kill me? Yes, but that's when I was sure that you were going to kill me. You burned me from the inside out. Darla, we must all be punished for our sins. Once you atoned, there was a great sense of relief, was there not? Yes, there was, but Poppy said that killing you was the only way to make sure I would never experience that kind of pain again. Poppy said. Poppy said. You massacred those dolls, my lovely young ladies. If you had not done that, there would have been no need for your punishment. He convinced you to kill me for false reasons, so I'd be out of the picture, and he'd have you all to himself. But why? Why wouldn't he have had me all to himself? <sighs> My dear Darla, you tr truly have lost all ability to think for yourself since this leech attached himself to you. Poppy is not a leech, and I can think for myself! Clearly, your psyche is not suited for this conversation. Come back to me when you're ready. Nice. Just leave. Leave me here all alone. Don't you understand, my dear Darla? With that poppy still in the picture, you can never be alone. Was the blood still warm when it gushed from her veins? Did you rip out her eyeball just as you've done so many times before? When you bit into it, did it taste of chocolate cake? Moo, describe it for me. Did you tear her head off completely? I said moo! Were her screams the screams of an innocent little infant girl? I said moo! I didn't kill her. Listen, I tried, but before I could, two dolls held me down and I couldn't lay a finger on her. Mattel's the one who told me the dolls let go of me. Matella? That's her name. The light one's name is Matella? Darling, what has she done to you? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, she kind of slapped me. She what? She slapped me across the face, but it was my fault. Your fault? I wasn't listening to her. I wouldn't believe her when she said you were... Um, never mind. Come now, Darla. Let's not have this cat and mouse game. Give it to me straightforward so we don't have to work for this anymore. I don't want to tell you. You know you can't have secrets from me. She... she said that you were going to leave me. Is that all? <laughs> How amusing. The woman is a fool. So you aren't planning on leaving me anytime soon? If it's up to me, I'll be by your side until the day you die. What? Are you saying I'm going to die? Are you all right? <laughs> Fine, but why are you saying that I'm going to die? We're all going to die someday. Hopefully my time will come before yours. There's only one true definite in this world. Death. Comforting, isn't it? No, I don't want to die! Easy, darling, easy. What's gotten you so worked up? Nothing, I just don't want to die. If it makes you feel any better, I can assure you that you won't be dying anytime soon. This I can promise. You can't make that kind of promise. Unfortunately, that is true. There is one promise I can make, however. I doubt that. When you do finally perish, I will be by your side. I thought that you said you were going to die before me. Guess we'll just have to change the schedule now, won't we? Oh, Poppy, I just thought of some really good idea for some writing, so if you don't mind. Uh, yes. All this talk of the light one and death has made me want to go cleanse myself. I'm, I'm going to go take a shower. Do you mind if I use the last clean towel? No. Not at all.
Well, that didn't take very long. Very funny. Does this mean you're finally ready to face the truth? I don't know. Does that mean you're going to slap me across the face again? <laughs> One thing you must learn about me. I'm not fond of making promises. Fine. I'm ready for the truth. First, you must tell me what made you change your mind. Poppy said some unsettling things. He said that he'd be by my side until the day that I died, but that in order to make sure that happened, I have to die before him. Isn't that what I told you at our last meeting? You don't have to be so arrogant. Why not? My prediction turned out to be correct. Yes, it was. To tell you the truth, it hurts. <coughs> you can tell me. Where does this hurt come from? Poppy's the only one who makes me happy. He understands me, my wants, my needs. When he's gone, there's not a single moment I don't wish I was dead. Poppy doesn't have to be in fight. Poppy shouldn't be your only source of happiness. Well, he is, and he has been for a long time. He was there for me when I was cast out of my family, my friends, and I lost myself. I had all this hatred, and I was unable to point it out towards the world, so I turned it on myself. All I could do was lay in bed and sleep. Well, at least when I'm sleeping, I don't feel like a bag of dog shit. It was Poppy who brought me out of that slumber that seemed to last an eternity. He took me by the hand and showed me the world from a completely different and bearable point of view. Poppy saved me from a conscious death. And now he plans to lay a bed lined with silk, surrounded by six walls, buried six feet under the ground. My dear darling, I do believe it's time for you to say goodbye to your Poppy. I know this is somewhat tragic news, but it must be done. Now that we put that unpleasant business to rest, why don't we get you out of that drag sweatsuit of yours and into some finer clothes? Rose, Olivia, to me at once. <laughs> <laughs> you silly little girls, you can take off your masks. Darla, this is Rose and this is Olivia. They are going to help you change into something more suiting. I'll be back in just a moment. You can't just leave me here with these things. They tried to kill me. Actually, if I remember correctly, it was you who killed their friends. So what? Motella said that you were going to change me or something? My god, Rose, she's even more pathetic than I originally thought. She wants us to change her like a little baby? Pathetic. No, you are going to get up and get out of your soil to pillow <coughs> yourself. I do think you're capable of that, at least. I'm sorry, I just thought, well, well, Liv, she can have thoughts of her own. Such a big girl you are. Hey, that's not fair. Not fair? Ha! You think we're not being fair? You're the one who murdered our friends in cold blood. And to repay you, Mattel has taken you in and made us accommodate your every need. Do you think that's fair? Hmm? My dearest Darla? Darling Darla? Darla, dear? I suggest you shut your mouth and you do what you're, you, you're told. <coughs> I can't believe that she'd waste such a beautiful dress in <coughs> such an ugly disgrace. What is it about you? What makes you so special? Why God, is she taking you in? God knows, if we're up to us, your head would be resting up on the mantle. Oh, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? The orange flame glowing and illuminating against your seamless, perfect skin. Lou, I think we were scared, our little friend. Oh, there's no need to be afraid. We aren't going to hurt you. Most unfortunate, but it is against our best interest. We do, however, want an answer to our question. What makes you so goddamn special? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I can't think of a single thing that makes you significant. That's absolutely nothing. There has to be something that makes you special. Perhaps you put your leg behind your head. A leg behind your head? Seriously, Olivia? What? I'd like to see you try. Never mind. There has to be something. I'm sorry, I honestly can't think of anything. <clears throat> That's true. If there's nothing special about you, why the hell would she take you in? I don't know. I wish I did, truly. I'm the most boring average person you could ever possibly meet. Would you just stop lathering and put on the dress? Here? Yes, you must change in front of us. Oh, Rose is playing with you, Darla. You can go change over there. But try to hurry. There are things that need to be done. Thank you.
I thought you were warming up to her. I just wanted her to think that. Why? So she'd trust me, of course. Matella's asked me to get close to her. That's funny. Matella didn't say anything to me. You know, it's probably just because she trusts me more. Why must you always be like that? Like what? A cold-hearted bitch. You should know that it's probably for the best. That's ridiculous. At this point, I don't care what you think. I'd like you to help me get close to Darla, if you please. Well, what's in it for me? I'll owe you one. How about that? Fine. Darling Darla! Please try to hurry. We have things to do. I don't know why she's taking her in. What is it? Well, you clean up nice. Man, yeah, that does look good on you. Matella has always had great taste in shoes. Give us a twirl. Does it look good, really? Yes, you look amazing. Although it is vexing you are such a fine race. What she means is. What I mean is that you look beautiful. Truly. Thanks. You are welcome. Do you know when Matella's gonna come back? Why so curious? Do we make you uncomfortable? Rose. No, no, not at all. I was just wondering how much more time we would have together. I actually enjoy talking with you. Have you enjoyed that conversation? Yes, truly. I don't understand. We haven't been nice to you at all. I know. I don't really care. I never really have friends, and the ones I did have weren't all that nice to me. If they weren't nice to you, why do you consider them friends in the first place? Because if it wasn't for them, there would have been no one. As long as I wasn't alone, I didn't mind putting up with a few cruel words. That's terrible. I'm sorry. It's fine. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. What did you just say? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. Darla, look at me. Look at me! While it is true that a branch or a boulder may break a bone, bones are easily met. Words, Darla, words are rusty razors. They sting as they slice through the flesh, the vital organs, and rest in the heart. An endless stream of verbal assaults leaves nothing to our insides but shredded ribbons the intent behind those barbs becomes assault in our wounds. Anyone who says words don't hurt is a fool. Rose, come back to us. Rose, Rose! I'm sorry, but if your friends abuse you, they don't deserve to call you a friend. Maybe you're right. I haven't talked to a lot of them in a very long time now. They all just left me. It's for the best. That's why I'm happy to be talking with you, too. I've been quite lonely for some time. It's just been popping in me for a while now. Popping? Yes, he's the one who's always be been there by my side. He picks me up and I fall down. Trust me, when I fall, sometimes it's like I've jumped off a damp cliff. So, it's safe to say that you two are close? Closer than I've ever been with anyone. If you don't mind me asking, what's the nature of your relationship? Our relationship? I'm confused. <laughs> Never mind. What can you tell us about him? Of course. Well, he's always dressed like a man of a black and white belt. He loves those suspenders of his. Suspenders? Seriously, he sounds like a fool. Hey, I like him, and you would too if you saw him on him. Somehow I doubt that. Whatever. Uh, sometimes he wears a fedora, and you're joking, right? Seriously, a damn fedora? Those monstrosities lived and died in the 50s, and the best thing the rest of us can do is just let them rest in peace. <laughs> you ask me, I think he calls up the fedora really well. Actually, I think they're making a comeback. That's absolutely terrifying. Liv, I think the world's ending. Sure, Rose, but if the world truly is ending because of a damn cat, then I'd at least like to die knowing who this poppy really is. That's, that's true. Let's uncover the truth of who poppy really is. If you say so, poppy's always been there to pick me up when I fall down. You've already said that. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Continue. Um, he always helps me when I get into sick situations. How so? Well, any time I can't make a decision or I don't know what to do, he gives me guidance. I follow it every time, and every time it all works out. Can you give us an example? Well, recently I was having these nightmares, so I wouldn't be able to sleep because of my dreams. But then, actually, never mind. That's a bad example. What? I don't think this particular incident shows his true colors. If he somehow helped you, how is this not a fair representation? Well, the dream I was having was the one with your friends. They were trying to kill me. I see. Yeah. 
let's just put this aside, pretend it doesn't matter, tell us a story. So Poppy showed up and I told him about the dream and about your friends? Putting them down? You say that like you're killing animals. Rose. She's right, Olivia. Rose, I know what I did was a terrible thing. I murdered your friends. I ripped their heads off with my bare hand. With every stitch that ripped, I felt such intoxicating power. I hate myself for saying this, but it felt so good in the moment. That's because you're selfish. I didn't care about anyone else in the moment. I didn't care if I was destroying the lives of these people. It's just that once I started, I couldn't stop. I didn't want to stop until they were all dead. And now when I stared out at the floor with glittered heads and broken bodies, I realized what I'd done. I just wanted to take it all back. But at the same time, I had never felt so good. I hate myself for saying that. I hate myself. With good reason. And Tella showed up. She set me on fire, permanent from the inside out. Even though it was the most excruciating pain I've ever felt, I loved it. She was doing something to me that I was incapable of doing. She gave me cleansing, gave me relief. She lifted an unbearable weight off my chest. She held me in her arms, the flames, looking at my stomach, reaching every inch of bone, sinew, and skin. I felt the most peculiar feeling. I felt, for the first time in a long time, I felt clean. I felt as though light had come into the world and everything was going to be all right. You are so messed up. <laughs> Would you think I realized that? Hey, no mind here. Please continue. There's not really much more to say. You didn't speak of Pop. You only spoke of Nutella. What is it that you would like to know? Besides rescuing you from difficult choices, what does he do that makes you happy? I don't know. He makes me feel like someone wants me in their life. It's nice to feel wanted. Is there anything else? I don't know. Well, what about your time together? What do you do? We just talk a lot. Do you ever go anywhere? No. There have been times that I've wanted to, but he never really seems to be in the mood. Do you know anything about his personal life? No. I tried asking when he first came into my life, but he just get very angry and changed the subject. So I just stopped asking. Does Poppy have any friends of his own? I would know. He hasn't mentioned any. So, you know nothing about him, yet you say you love him? Sorry, love? Yes, love. Isn't it obvious? You barely know him, yet you speak of him like he's some holy being. He is far from holy, and I do not love him. Well, then he loves you. That is impossible. He's trying to kill me. Ah, it's about time you've come around. You knew? Of course I knew. Mattel wouldn't have asked me to get close to her and not told me why. Damn it. She told you to do this? Well, I mean, here I thought I was actually making genuine friends for once. I did begin speaking to you with an ulterior motive, but our conversation hasn't been all that bad. That doesn't make me feel any better. Okay, just because Mattella put us up to this doesn't mean that it was all a ploy. Speaking of the devil, where is Mattella? I need to talk to her. Darla, please, can we just talk about this? You know what? No! I'm done with all this talking! All anyone ever wants to do is talk and talk, and I'm tired of it! I need action! I can't wait anymore! Darla, just sit down and think. You there it is! I don't want to think! I've thought about my thoughts, and I've thought about thinking! I'm done with it! Darla, come on, now. There it is again! Someone tell me how to think, or how to feel, how to be or do! Bring me Matella now! Now! We don't know where she is! She didn't tell us, truly! What are these things to you? Stop it with the looks! Would someone tell me why you have all these doll masks? Or I'll smash this! You will put that mask back down this instant. I think it best if your pets left us. I had a feeling that might do the trick. Would you mind telling me why it caused such a scene? Was this all to get my attention? If you think that was a scene, you have no idea. Oh, really? If you don't stop being so condescending all the time, you'll see what I can do. And what would that entail exactly? Here, let me show you. Where do you think you're going, my dear Darla? While I do appreciate this new show of defiance, I have to wonder where it is you plan to go. You don't even know where you are. I'm tired of words. I want action. Is that all? Well, that's fantastic. Where does this new motivation come from? You use people to get information from me just so you could learn my secrets. I will have to remember to use this tact more often. But 
Why? Why did you do it? To answer succinctly, I need to know more about Poppy. Poppy? What about him? Is this about our relationship? Yes and no. This is about me and the monster who plays at being a man. This is about actions and consequences. You were not Poppy's first addiction, though I was hoping to make you his last. Why not just be honest? Why not just ask for the information yourself? The two of you are entwined. You, the vital organ, and he, the cancer, eating away at you. Malignancies can be removed, but more often than not, the host must suffer. Would you have really helped me plan the murder of your precious Poppy, knowing you could be hurt in the process? I see what you mean. Rest a while. I'll go finalize my plans and speak with Rose and Olivia. I can't just go into sleep knowing you're gonna plot a murder I'm to carry out. I never said that you would be the one to carry out the final act, but now that you mention it, it does make sense. Would you like to help? If it'll set me free, then yes. I want to be free. I like it when you're all feisty. If I was feisty when Poppy and I were planning your murder, would you have liked me then? Well, we have seen how that little escapade worked out. Can we get the show on the road? Fine, yes, whatever you say, my dear Darla. I'm gonna go fetch the girls. Olivia and Rose? It's so peculiar, the similarities. I never would have thought you to be fond of the mass. Oh, I wasn't. I was Oh, just... not that I blame you. It is enticing, wouldn't you say? I mean, I guess so. How did it feel to wear it? Power. So much power. Excellent. So what do I do now? Have you come up with a plan? I thought that you were going to finalize your plan. Don't you have a plan? You are just too precious. Of course I've come up with a plan. Jesus! You really think I would trust someone so close to our intended victim to plan his murder? Something as important as this? You are a silly little girl. Why don't you just tell me? Fine. Yes, whatever you say, my dear Dyla. This is what's going to happen, and you must do exactly as I say. God, what have I done? I knew I should have told her no. I knew I should have said, Darla, I'm truly sorry about all of your little eccentricities, but I'm not going to sleep with you. Then she held out her hand, soft skin, the contact and such. I couldn't help myself. It's okay. Nothing happened. I didn't give in to temptation, and nothing is ruined. We can carry on everything as normal. Darling, Darla, did you happen to do something with my shoes? Darla? God damn it, Darla! What did you do with my shoes? You better tell me before I get extremely angry. She just needs her space. Yes, this is just, just needs her space. This is the first time we slept in the same bed together. That she was aware of, at least. Just needs her space. Yes, that's it, just, just needs your space. 
Jesus, darling, I thought you were off into some delusional sin. Sin. Quit worrying, you fool. Now I know how she feels. Let me do it sleep and wait for her to return. Darla never truly believed me when I told her Poppy would be the one to send her to her grave. So you've come, the light one. That name again? Really? I find it quite silly. I am known as Metella, and these are my daughters, Rose and Olivia. And that girl you just snuffed the life out of, that was your own dear Darla. You idiot! You killed her! Rose, where are your manners? Mother! He's killed Darla! True. What does that tell you? Always listen to mother, for mother is always right. And that is exactly why you are my favorite. <laughs> this can't be real. It's one of your illusions, a, a trick of the light. I assure you, this is no illusion. You never would have killed Darla. She was, she was mine. It is a terrible thing when we find we eventually destroy the ones we love most. Suffocation is such a tragic way to die. You did this to her. You. Your corruption. What did you tell her? That she'd be free? She never would have done this on her own. She never would have become one of us. Them. The ones who haunted her dreams. <laughs> oh, Poppy. Haven't you realized by now? The worst nightmares are the ones that start when you open your eyes. Thank <laughs> you.